Welcome to Newsmakers. I'm Tim White. Joining me on the show from WPRI.com, reporter Ted Nisi. Senator Jack Reed, thank you very much for being here. Thank we you. really appreciate Tim, it. Tim, Ted, thank you. We know you have a lot going on, and Ted and I do have a lot of specific questions about sure. foreign and domestic policy that we want to hit up. But first, I'd like to hear your broader view of what's going on. Just over a month ago, Donald Trump was uh, sworn into office. Yes. What is your impression of the Trump administration so far? Uh, there's been a lot of chaos. Uh, a lot of it is reflected or reflective of his temperament, his approach to the job. Uh, but even institutionally, for example, the reorganization of the National Security Council, where you take off the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the only professional, nonpartisan person on the NSC, and don't give him permanent sort of a, a permanent seat, and then you put on Steve Bannon, who is a political ideological operative, and put him on. So you're seeing a lot of that going on. You're seeing some confusion. You're also seeing attempts to go after uh, basic programs that we depend upon, like the Affordable Care Act, and that is causing a great reaction across the country, not just uh, in democratic areas, but every place, because people realize health insurance is in jeopardy, and they're trying to, to do that. They've talked about block granting Medicaid, which would be disastrous to the state. Uh, we haven't yet seen real uh, detailed plans of his tax proposals or infrastructure proposals there. Uh, so there's great uncertainty and, and great confusion, frankly. But, you know, isn't he just falling through on the promises he made that put him into office? Well, he is falling through on some promises and uh, forgetting other promises. I think he promised very uh, specifically he wouldn't touch Medicare. Yet, if you repeal the Affordable Care Act, that means we have the, what was referred to as the donor hole, where seniors, for their pharmaceutical benefits, will reach a point where they have to pay out of pocket, and we're, we're eliminating that through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you'll go affect the solvency of the Medicare Trust Fund by almost 10 years, just 10 years sooner to insolvency. So, you know, he is, in fact, doing that. He pointed, pointed and, and over my objections, confirmed to Secretary of HHS, uh, Secretary Price, who has been the leading advocate of privatizing Medicare. So a lot of what he said on the campaign trail, he apparently has forgotten. All right, let's talk about uh, Michael Flynn. The White he was fired because he was dishonest with the vice president about his conversations with Russia, not because he talked to him. Donald Trump has said um, he was just doing his job. Is there anything wrong with what Flynn actually did by talking to the Russian ambassador prior to Inauguration Day? Well, there's the Logan Act, which was passed uh, hundreds of years ago, which prohibits essentially non-authorized civilians from uh, conducting diplomatic relations. So there's a technical crime on the books. It's never been prosecuted. Right. Uh, but certainly I think the, the issue of trying to involve yourself in an uh, ongoing uh, diplomatic issue with a foreign power, uh, particularly someone who's close to the president-elect, raises all sorts of questions. So it, you know, technically one could pursue sort of a Logan Act charge. I doubt if that would ever be pursued. But it's just not appropriate. It's completely inappropriate, I think. We want to talk about all the, the various questions swirling about Russia. Right. Um, the Senate Intelligence Committee, you're an ex officio member yes. of that committee, uh, received a closed door briefing with FBI Director James Comey last week. Did you attend that? Yes, I did. Uh, did, did Comey discuss anything involving President Trump and his associates uh, and Russia? Uh, the, the ground rules of a classified briefing are the information stays in the room. Uh, what we're trying to do and working on a bipartisan basis is to uh, analyze what was already established publicly by the intelligence community as a deliberate intrusion into our election in a comprehensive way. They not only hacked into uh, many uh, computers, including the Democratic National Committee and others, they had a disinformation campaign, they had a bot network that was putting out fake stories, they were doing all sorts of things, and that was has been publicly uh, acknowledged by the intelligence community. What we're pursuing now is any further connection between the Russians and the campaign in, in 2016. Uh, there are some investigations going on by the FBI, which, which again, confidential because of their investigations. Uh, this is a serious threat to, to our country. Uh, when a foreign power, Russia or anyone else, can wield influence on our election, that undercuts the basic fiber of our country, our democracy. You, and more importantly, just final point, yeah. is that 
This is something that won't go away if we ignore it. We have elections in 2018 and 2020, and we hope indefinitely, and they can't be uh, undercut by foreign involvement. Do you know more about the tr President Trump, his associates in Russia, than, than we do? Uh, we are beginning to learn more and more, but it's again, and it's appropriately on a classified basis. What we attempt to do, and this isn't on a bipartisan basis, uh, Senator McCain and I were the first together to call for a public hearing. We had that hearing before President Trump was inaugurated. That's where the intelligence community publicly said the Russians were involved. They did it comprehensively. In fact, it was ordered by Putin. This was not a, a rogue agency in the Russian uh, uh, intelligence service. Uh, that established a, a basic uh, baseline. Now uh, we tried, we asked that there be a joint committee that could have more public hearings that would involve every committee of, of, of the Senate of relevance so that not only we could find out what went on, but legislate to correct it. Uh, but under the pressure of all this, McConnell, the lead, Republican leader, decided, well, at least I have to have the Intelligence Committee pursue this. Now in the Intelligence Committee, and uh, Senator Warner from Virginia is a ranking Democrat, Senator Burr is the chairman, we're pushing very hard to get to the facts, to all the facts. In fact, yesterday, Senator Collins, one of my colleagues, indicated that uh, she would not be adverse to, to asking General Flynn to testify. Uh, she also suggested that if it was necessary to get uh, the president's tax returns, that, that that was something that, if she felt was appropriate, that they would ask for. So, Can, can the Senate get uh, the president's tax returns? Do you have uh, a tool to do that? We could uh, issue a subpoena. And would you uh, support that? I think, frankly, every presidential candidate should release their income taxes. Uh, I've sponsored legislation so that the president has to do it. But I think every candidate should do it. Should do, it. Uh, uh, because, do you think Senate candidates should as well? Uh, I've been doing it since 1990 when I ran for the House. You always have. Senator Whitehouse does not. I, I, I only can speak for myself, but I, I think from the president... When you're, you know, it's quite a bit of a difference. When you're conducting the foreign policy in the United States, when you're deciding w w what, essentially, what programs will be built by what manufacturer, when you're deciding in, in a more significant way than anyone else, what is the relationship to a country, if you have interest there, you know, what, what's the source of, and he has active business mm -hmm. going on. We have very, very rigorous reporting requirements in the Senate, and not quite so in, in One Senate, final question. In the, in the White House. One right. final question on the yes. Russia matters. Do you think um, now it confirmed Attorney General Sessions should recuse himself from those various FBI investigations involving the Trump campaign? Absolutely. No, 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 no question. He should recuse himself. You, you've been talking a lot about congressional hearings and, you know, uh, meetings and having Congress get to the bottom of it. But I got to tell you, there's not a lot of public trust in a congressional inquiry? Is it time for an independent commission to get to the bottom of all this? I would uh, like to see an independent commission. The reality is that, that will take a while. If you look at the 9-11 commission, which did a remarkably good job, uh, they were authorized at, in the end of 2002, I believe. It took that long mm -hmm. to, get, to get the legislation up. And it took them several years to get a report. The report was good and thorough. But again, I think we have to, we can't sort of uh, wait that long. Would it be good to have a parallel commission of eminent uh, Americans uh, that could look deeper and longer? Of course. I, I actually have a Russian uh, sure. uh, question related to Russia. Uh, last week we had on um, Michael 